To help us understand what leads to such soaring Olympic success and whether we can apply some of it in our own lives, Dr. Elaine Gilbert is here from uh, IU Health. Thanks for being with us. Yes, thank you. Uh, you have uh, sort of dual uh, resumes, doctor of psychology, which is why you're here. Yes. Also, accomplished athlete yourself, you threw javelin at Purdue. I did, I did. Boiler up. It boiler up with the IU code on, <laughs> the, the irony here. Um, your visit is spurred by an article, I think it was Psychology Today, did about something called the loneliness epidemic. So yes. as we dive into your thoughts, generally speaking, what's the loneliness ep epidemic? So loneliness is the idea that, especially in this post-COVID era, that we're really struggling to find connection mm -hmm. and worth in our day-to-day. -day. What do you see then when you see Simone Biles, when you see Katie Ledecky, for that matter, a Hall of Famer like Dwight Freeney, that we can learn from when we address that? Yeah, I would think of mental toughness and resilience and mm -hmm. perseverance, not avoiding hard, but really persevering and going through and experiencing not only the physical discomfort, but the mental and social kind of accolades that follow that through. So, so many things that sound like we would want to run away from them rather than lean into them. Yes. But let's go ahead and, and talk about some, some drill down, as they say, specifics on that. Um, you talk about distress tolerance. How do you define that and why is it important to it's, sometimes embrace that? Yes. So distress tolerance is the idea that we want to experience emotion versus avoid emotion. Sometimes we get stuck in that avoidance cycle mm -hmm. that it feels so good to avoid initially, but we know it sustains and stays hard. And so we really want to persevere and go through the hard. And so as we experience emotion, then we can, we can build that strength. The whole pressure builds diamonds thing. Yes. All, all of that. The distinction between feeling and fixing and when I first read that I thought oh well it's good to fix but you say no 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 not always yes not always so like truly allowing ourselves to feel and to allow ourselves to not always fix resisting the writing reflex so kind of getting into this idea that sometimes we don't have enough resources and so avoidance is a coping mechanism in and of itself and so if we don't have enough resources we need to build that and sustain that but also then work towards problem solving or managing the impact coping which is the idea of controlling the controllables would, would an, uh, an example of that be for, for instance if i can draw on your experience it, as javelin thrower you form was huge, I'm, For sure. I'm almost certain, that there probably were times where your body didn't behave the way you wanted it to and you could have figured out a way to get it done, Yes. but long term that wouldn't have been the best way to do it. Exactly. So the idea that muscle memory doesn't only just happen when we do use physicality, but we also want to use our brains and our emotionality to allow ourselves to really hit that next level. I so, think goals matter. Yeah. And so thinking about like what are your short term versus your long term or immediate ideas. Some, sometimes these hopes put things at odds with each other. But you say the duality of accepting different things as both being true is important. Perfect. Yes, exactly. So there's duality of thought is this big concept, but it's the idea that we can do hard and that's OK, even when it is hard. Well, this is a fascinating conversation. and, and with luck, we'll have more of these down the line because you've been good for us today, especially sharing both the, the experiences as a top-level athlete and somebody who studies this for a living. Thanks for being with us Thank today. Thank you, guys. Um, we'll